It is an image that has continued to dominate Uganda's television screens. Images of powerful individuals in government sleeping as the president, the fountain of honor and commander-in-chief of the armed forces addresses the nation on critical issues that they are in charge of implementing. A quick flashback. Date, 6th June 2013. Time check, half past two o'clock. Venue, the Serena Conference Center. Occasion, State of the Nation address where the President is explaining government performance for the previous year as well as his plans for the next. Vice President Edward Sekandi, Prime Minister John Patrick Amamambabazi and his Deputy General Moses Ali are in another world, dozing the evening away, indifferent to what their boss is communicating. Not far away, Finance Minister Maria Chiwanuka as well joins the party, an incident quite strange and happens probably only in Uganda and a few other places. Had this, the president not been the one delivering the speech, okay, he would be sleeping too. These are the men and women that the president trusts to implement his vision of seeing Uganda transformed into a first world country in 50 years time. And as such, many are raising questions on whether the decision of these top guns in government to sleep at such a critical hour does not affect their implementation as the nation continues to boast of terrible infrastructure, miserable roads and yawning health facilities. It is really a very unfortunate situation because this is the time uh, top officials in government really uh, needed to pay a lot of attention. The same sleeping group is the one that the president enjoys working with. They are all tired, right from the president, the vice president, ETC. Those are grandfathers who should, for the few hours they are awake, be playing with their grandchildren. As political leaders, they spearhead the transactions in ministries that are supposed to translate into effective service delivery. Probably the reason why most technocrats have emerged as power blocks, dictating events in the ministries. Indeed, the president at some point blamed some officials for not doing enough, citing Minister of Health on maternal health and issues to do with NADS that the president says must be rethought. Billions have been swindled from the office of the Prime Minister, Ministry of Finance, Ministry of Public Service and other government agencies and as such, a joke has emerged that the money is often stolen as the political leaders retreat to slumberland. You cannot expect life to be better. One with a sleeping president, with a, vice, a sleeping vice president, with a sleeping cabinet. If you looked at the red paper today, the headline is they have slept again. It is critical for the country to be reassured that these events do not play out as well in the day-to-day -day running of government business, where some have already complained about unnecessary bureaucracies and delays caused by officials who are not bothered or rather prefer to take their time. And yet, the president promised improved service delivery in the next financial year and many will be looking out for its implementation. In any case, the resources are limited of members of parliament in the opposition. Think that Ugandans cannot understand that. You think Ugandans have not read the book of Genesis? To, 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 to know that things take time. Promising is one thing, delivery is another. And as people in charge continue to sleep during critical hours, the public might be worried as chances are that the promises could pass unnoticed. Some have argued that most top guns in government have since become weak, consumed by old age, yet they have never thought about hanging their political boots as the countries continue to suffer the repercussions of their tiredness. Surprisingly, even some younger people are falling prey to the sleeping bug. Sabit Joseph, WS Television, from the Ugandan Parliament.